Welcome to Connecting with God. In our last video, we started looking at the process of what it means to be a disciple. I think a lot of people, they enjoy God, they love God, they actually want to serve God, but they don't really know what it, in, what it means, what it entails. So we're looking at the words of the Lord Himself because He's explaining exactly what it takes to be His disciple. And we're looking at it in Luke chapter 14. Last video, we noted that in order for you to be a disciple, according to his words, he says that you have to make sure that you put serving him and doing his will above loving your own family and even above loving your own life. So whatever your family wants, whatever you want, has to be put less important than what the Lord wants. Well, now in the same text in Luke chapter 14, we're going to look at two more concepts today. And the first concept is found in Luke chapter 14 and verse 27, and it's bearing your cross. Luke 14 verse 27 says, And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So this, of course, was very interesting. And you can imagine that when Jesus said this, probably around six to nine months before he was crucified on the cross, that this would have been something pretty amazing to the disciples, talking about bearing their own cross when, of course, he hadn't even hung on a cross yet. But the idea of bearing a cross means that the Lord's going to put responsibilities on being a believer, on being a saint, on being a Christian, on being a disciple. And those responsibilities mean something. So he's saying that if you're not willing to bear that cross, you're not worthy of being my disciple. Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 6 and the 14th verse, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. That's a great way of putting the fact that the world has been crucified to me, that means that all of the stuff that appeals to me in the world, I have, in a way, put it to death. I've risen above all of those temptations. And as I rise above those temptations, as I say no to what the world does, as I say no to what friends may want me to do, I'm bearing a cross. And bearing the cross of, of righteousness is part of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. That's going to help you to raise your life and to raise your level of service to something that was completely unknown to you prior. Now, the second idea that we're going to talk about in this lesson is also in Luke chapter 14. This time, it's in verse 33. And we're going to talk about leaving your possessions. So here's what Jesus said, Luke chapter 14 and verse 33. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Now I'll admit, it's points like these that kind of give people maybe a lot of nervousness. They think, well, this is maybe some kind of cult. They're going to make me sell everything that I own and then put it in some kind of communal thing. That's not what I'm talking about at all, nor was that what Jesus was talking about. What Jesus was saying is that all of your possessions in life as important as all of that stuff is, sometimes it's important to us because we've always wanted it. Sometimes it's important because of the price tag. Sometimes it's important because it's important as a family heirloom. But all of that has to be less important to me than the Lord Himself. That's what He meant when He says that whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple doesn't mean that you have to sell everything that you have and, and give it to some religious group and then go off and live in, some, in a commune with them. That's not it at all. In Luke chapter 12, in the 15th verse, Jesus said, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. And then he taught a parable that we often call the parable of the rich young ruler about this man who had many barns and he had his crops put in these barns and they had reached overflowing so he had to tear them down and he had to build new barns and it was simply a parable that taught that this really was all this man thought about 
simply the things in this life, simply the way that his possessions could increase. And it was all focused on what was here. And the point was, Jesus said, that's not the way that you be my disciple. Sure, we want to have things. In fact, in having things, Paul taught in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 and 19, that in having things, we can actually help and do the kind of good that God wants us to do. But it takes looking at everything the exact, correct, precise, biblical way. And that's what Jesus wants from us. He says in Luke chapter 18, and beginning in verse 18, another parable. Now a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And he said, All these things I have kept from my youth. So when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute it to the poor, that you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But when he heard this, he went away very sorrowful because he was rich. And when Jesus saw that he became very sorrowful, he said, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. For it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Now, it doesn't mean that it's impossible. It just means that it's very difficult. The reason why is because you're focused on what's all around you instead of actually being focused looking up, as it were, to God. That's how, you be his, that's how you can be His disciple. So we want to advocate by virtue of what Jesus said in Luke chapter 14, that we learn how to bear our cross and we learn how to put the proper perspective on our possessions. And by doing this, we can bear fruit. By doing this, we can be the right kind of disciple. I actually like the way that Paul put it in Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. He said, You can be filled with the knowledge of His will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And if you become like that, you can bear fruit. If you become like that, you can elevate your life to something that you never thought possible. And whose words are it? Are they? It's just simply the words of the Lord. Because those words are helping all of us become a better disciple. So we want you to keep looking for the last lesson in this series, the third one. We're going to look at some more words of Jesus. But in the meantime, like this video, share it, subscribe to our channel. Because we want you to continue to see and to find the content that we're going to make possible over the coming months. So... We'll see you next time. We hope you have a wonderful day.